Your name will be forgotten within two to three generations. My name is Lisa Renee Hall, and I help highly sensitive people and deep feelers explore unconscious biases so that they stand on the side of justice and become better ancestors, all while protecting their energy. <laughs> ah, yes. Your name will be forgotten within two to three generations. Don't believe me? If you still have access to your parents, all right, if they're still alive, you have a good, and you're not estranged from them, and you can speak to them, ask them the names of their grandparents. Each parent would have to remember four names each. All right? Some can remember all four names. And then go to your parent and ask them to name their great-grandparents. So that would be three generations removed for your parents. They'll have to name eight people. And chances on each side. One parent will have to name eight. The other parent will have to name eight. Chances are there are some names that they will not remember. And again, do this exercise if you still have access to your parents, if you haven't been separated from them due to court order or adoption or estrangement of some kind, or even if they have already passed on, then obviously those are some of the reasons why you wouldn't be able to do this exercise. But even if it's, if it's not your parents, if you have access to one of your biological aunts or uncles, um, maybe an older cousin, you know, ask them that question. Ask them to name ancestors two generations from them. In regards to your parents, it would be their grandparents. And then ask them to name ancestors three generations from them. And that would be for your parents or great grandparents. Now, on my side, because I have chattel slavery in my ancestry, it's actually rather difficult for my parents to name their ancestors. For example, my mom knows all the women in her lineage, and on her father's side of the family, which would be my grandfather, of course she knows his name, but anyone further than that, she doesn't know. My dad knows a lot of the individuals on both sides of his family but again there are some names that are lost to time to memories and for some of us if we have violence in our ancestry then that's how we've lost track of naming those ancestors and so whatever your circumstances are whether you have children or not, there's a way that you can be remembered by future generations. And that's by doing something significant. Now, people hear me use the word significant and they get twisted up out of shape. I've seen people argue, like come in forcefully with their opinion that I, why are you shaming? I'm like, I, I don't understand where this is coming from. You're shaming me, how? How are you giving me that much power? I'm not Skeletor. So, but anyways, um, and so when I see that, what I want to remind you is to leave something significant behind. It doesn't mean an Oscar winning film. It doesn't mean a best-selling book. And of course, if you've done any of those things, that's okay too. But significance has to be defined by you on your own terms. And so for, I'll give you some examples of what's significant. Again, whether you have children or not. Whether you have biological children of your own or not, or whether you've had children and they've passed on, unfortunately, before you have, you still have, this still applies to you. 
significance can be leaving behind a recipe book. Maybe unintentionally, but you leave, you write down all your recipes. This was the case for one of my friends whose great-grandmother left behind this volume containing herbal recipes. And my friend is of Croatian descent. And she didn't know that she had, a, she comes from a long line of medicine women. Can you believe that? And so she was so happy to find this book and be able to confirm for herself that yes, I come from a line of medicine women in my heritage as a Croatian woman. Significance, I had an older gentleman pop by my, my um, Instagram profile when I had shared this in writing. And he said to me, I have nothing to leave behind. I don't have children. I don't expect to ever have any. There's nothing I can leave. Then when I went to his Instagram profile, I saw post after post of his wisdom. He's an outdoors person. And he takes pictures of things from the outdoors. And I read this thing, I was just like, dude, you have so much you can leave behind. Your Instagram profile is leaving so much in terms of your wisdom of the outdoors. For me, what's significant that I plan to leave behind, although I don't have children of my own, my sisters do. And what I want to do is leave for them our family tree so that they don't have to start from scratch. And I've been filling in each name one by one as I discover them. And I just went up a hill, so I'm out of breath. And this is significant so that, again, those who come after me don't have to start from scratch. So I don't have to try to get the recollection and photos and, and documentation from several different family members when instead I can compile it in a place where all family members have access. That's what I'm doing, and especially as a woman who has both the oppressed and the oppressors in my family tree, it's become of even more significance for me to ensure that every ancestor is accounted for. Every one of them. Every one of them. Because black lives do matter, and they matter in my family tree. Even though at the time, due to the system of bondage that they were forced to engage in, at the time their lives didn't matter back then. And so I pay homage to my ancestors by finding out their names and filling every slot, every slot in my family tree with their name. Again, so that people who come after me don't have to start from scratch. And so you need to define what that is. This is a recipe book. Let me do that again. Are you going to leave behind a recipe book? Or is it going to be your wisdom of the outdoors? Are you going to leave behind a more complete family tree so other descendants don't have to start from scratch? Will it be your writings? Will it be compilations of videos of you maybe teaching and talking? One of my mentor coaches who unfortunately passed away, she and I, in the week before she passed, we got on the phone and I recorded her story. And her instruction to me was to retain the recordings until her daughter reaches the age of majority. And then I will pass on all this information to her daughter. I get to be a steward of this very important information so that once her daughter again becomes of age, I can pass it on to her. That is what was of significance to my mentor coach who passed on. And this is what she did so that her daughter doesn't start from scratch. There's so many things you can do. So don't get wrapped up with the word significance to think it needs to be something that's so visible that the whole world needs to see. Instead, I encourage you, I encourage you to craft together what makes sense for you, what aligns with your personality and skill set. If you're a writer, write. 
If you're a visual artist, draw. If there's particular knowledge that you have, file a patent, trademark the name. These are all the tangible things that you can leave behind that have nothing to do with lands. It has nothing to do with homes. It has nothing to do with heirlooms. Wisdom, according to the Christian Bible, so that wisdom is more precious than gold. And it's because wisdom stands the test of time. Gold may tarnish. It might. It might. Rubies get lost. Someone may lose it. Lose the, lose the rubies. But wisdom, man, that lasts forever. Oh, look at that tree. Wonder what happened there? And so, uh, I just want to remind you that there are four types of ancestors. And this is why, whether you have children or not, you have responsibility in doing something significant so that your wisdom is left behind for future generations. I call it fire up your legacy. Fire. And the, fi the word fire is an acronym, of course. The F in fire is familial. That's where you pass on your DNA and cellular memories. This is the most common type of ancestry that people know of. Now, whether you have children of your own or not, there are three other ancestors that you can become. The eye and fire is ideological. That's where you leave behind ideas and innovations. This can be music, it can be writings, it can be paintings. The R in fire is relational. A relational ancestor leaves behind affinities and memberships. Think about sororities you belong to. Or maybe you graduated from a particular university and you're now part of their alumni community. I know for my university, my alumni, my alumni association has, um, what do you call it? has deals that they negotiate. And so my home, not my home, my car insurance, my life insurance, uh, I got a good deal because I accessed it through my alumni association. So think about that as being an ancestor or something you can leave behind, affinities and memberships. And then finally the E in fire is in, it's environmental. To become an environmental ancestor, you leave behind wisdom about the celestial bodies, about nature, and so on. So there's no excuse. No excuse. To be remembered, leave something behind. Stumble bravely.